Welcome to TL Yarn Crafts TV. I'm Tony, your host, here to share my brand new pattern, the Sweet Gingham Baby Blanket. Hey there, thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial on the Sweet Gingham Baby Blanket. I fell in love with this project the minute I started working on it and I think you will love it too. So first I wanted to cover what we'll be going over in this video. We will cover the foundations of Tunisian crochet as well as the Tunisian Simple Stitch, which is the only Tunisian crochet stitch we'll be doing in this video. We'll also cover how to do color changes in Tunisian crochet, how to add a border to Tunisian crochet and how to add these cute little pom-poms to your border. So let's jump right in and talk about the materials. For this project, I decided to use Lion Brand Wool Ease. It's a 20% wool blend that I found at my local Joann store. Special thanks to Joann for sponsoring this project and providing yarn support. What I love about this yarn is since it is 20% wool, it's nice and soft and comfortable, but it is also machine washable. So you'll need three different colors for this project. For your A color, you'll need two balls of woolies. I decided to go with Rose Heather, this pretty pinkish heathered color. For color B, you'll need two balls as well, and I decided to go with Fisherman. And for color C, you'll need just one ball, and I decided to go with Dark Rose Heather. Additionally, for this project, you're going to need a six and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet hook with a 20 four inch cord. I'm going to be using a shorter cord because I'm just doing a swatch today, but you'll want a 24 inch cord. These came from my Denise Interchangeables Tunisian Crochet Hook Set. They are my tried and true favorites and I did a review on these hooks that I will include a link to in this video. You will also need a traditional crochet hook 5.5 millimeter. This is of course size I. You'll need a pair of scissors a darning needle, and a clover pom-pom maker. Details about how to use a clover pom-pom maker are in my clover pom-pom maker video, which I will include a link to as well. Before you start your sweet gingham baby blanket, I encourage you to roll your yarn into either balls or cakes. The reason I encourage this is because as you continue along your project, you're gonna need a different ball of yarn for each color change within your row. The reason I suggest this is because if you don't and you try to carry your yarn along the row, you're gonna have giant floats on the back of your blanket and we're going for a nice clean set of color changes for the back. So I encourage you to make five balls of color A, four balls of color B, and another five balls of color C. That way you don't have to worry about having big floats on the back of your blanket and you can easily change colors whenever you need to in your row. Next up, let's talk gauge. So gauge is the number of stitches and the number of rows it takes for a specific measurement within your blanket. I always do a four inch gauge swatch. So my gauge for this blanket was 14 stitches by about 12 to 13 rows. And I took my gauge after I blocked this blanket. As anyone who's done Tunisian crochet before knows, Tunisian crochet has a tendency to curl and be very tight at first. So what you'll want to do is block your project, make sure it's nice and flat and you can either steam it or wet block it. And then you'll be able to gather your gauge a lot more easily. Oh. Ultimately, we're going for perfect squares. As you can tell, even with my sample, my project is a little bit taller than it is wide, which is perfectly fine. Even with the border, I only ended up being about an inch off from a perfect square, and I still think it looks great. So you'll want to make your gauge swatch, block it, and take your gauge to try and decide what adjustments you need to make. But like I said, my gauge ended up being about 14 stitches by 12 rows. So we'll be making a gauge swatch as part of the tutorial today, and you'll be able to see the adjustments that I make to get as close to a perfect square as possible. To make your sweet gingham baby blanket, you'll want to follow the schematic that is currently on screen. As you can see, our blanket is nine blocks wide by nine blocks high. And you can follow my exact color scheme by using the colors that I suggested with color A being rose heather, color B being fisherman, and color C being dark rose heather. So let's go ahead and get started. 
To start our blanket, we'll want to grab color A because that is what we'll use for our foundation. Start by making a slip knot, however you prefer. So for your actual blanket, you will start with a chain of 99. I am going, only going to chain 33 because like I said, I'm making a swatch. I'm not making the full project, but we're using our six and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet hook to make our chain. So you will chain 99 for the full blanket. I'm only going to chain 33 here. So here I have my 33 chains. Then I'm going to flip my chain over to work into the back bumps. And I'm gonna start in the second chain from the hook. And I'm going to pull up a loop in the back bump of each chain across. So you're gonna take the tip of your hook go underneath the back bump and pull up a loop. The nice thing about that is you end up with this chain-like effect, which will be the edge of your project, which we'll need when we get to the border. But for now, we're just gonna pull up a loop in each back bump all the way to the end. I will end up with 33 stitches for your project. You will end up with 99 loops on your hook at the end of this row. All right, so we're at the end of our row. I now have 33 loops on my hook. And I'm going to begin my return pass for my foundation row. So you start it by yarning over and doing a chain. And then you'll yarn over and pull through two loops all the way back. So pull through one and two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. You'll continue that until you only have one loop left on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and continue that. Alrighty, now we're back at the beginning of our row, and we've yarned over and pulled through two until we only have this one loop left on our hook, and that's what we were going for. Now, this is where the color changes start to come in. As you saw from the schematic, we're going to be alternating colors A and B and we're gonna be alternating every 11 stitches. So your first 11 stitches will be color A, your next 11 stitches will be color B, and so on, all the way through the end of the row. So you're gonna end up with nine total blocks alternating color A and B for every 11 stitches. So the way that we'll do that, and like I said, we'll be adding a new ball of yarn for each color change, is I'm gonna be doing color A, color B, color A you will have a total of nine balls of yarn. I'll only have three because I'm only doing three repeats for my swatch. So for Tunisian crochet, your first stitch on your hook counts as a stitch. So this counts as our first stitch. And then we're gonna do 10 more stitches with color A. So this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Now we'll want to change to color B. We're gonna drop color A, we're not going to cut it, we're just gonna drop it, and then we're gonna add color B by simply going into our stitch, and we're gonna draw up that loop with color B. So just lay it over your hook and pull up the loop with color B. And we're gonna do that for the next 10 stitches as well. So we'll have 11 total in color B. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Now we're on our last 11 stitches and we're gonna do those with color A again. So instead of picking up from this first ball, which we've already used, I have a second ball of color B that I'm going to use. So like we did with the last color change, we will insert our hook into the stitch, drop color B, grab a fresh color A, and pull up that loop. And again, we're doing 11 stitches. And 
and this is nine, 10. And then for our last stitch with Tunisian crochet, we'll rotate this towards us and work under those bottom two loops of the last stitch and pull up a loop. All right, so this is what we have right now. <laughs> it looks a little fiddly, but we've got our first 11 stitches in color A, our second 11 stitches in color B, and our third set of 11 stitches in color C. And that is how you work up the gingham pattern. So we're gonna be doing 11 stitches in each color and then 10 total rows. So let's do a return pass, and then I'll show you a bit more about color changes with Tunisian crochet. So to do your return pass, you'll want to chain one, yarn over, and pull through two loops until the second loop from the tip of your hook is a different color. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're pulling through two, and this is with color A. And now the second loop from the tip this loop right here is another color. That's how we know it's time to change colors. So we're gonna want to do our next um, yarn over and pull through with our new color. So what we'll want to do on the back of our work to make sure that our colors, um, make sure we don't have any issues with our color changes is we'll actually want to lay this color that we're gonna not use anymore over the color that we do want to use. We're gonna want to do a little bit of a tug and pull it tight and we're pulling that new working color underneath our old color. And that's what makes sure you don't have any gaps in your color changes. So now we're gonna yarn over and continue with our return pass. So we're gonna pull through two and we're gonna do that until our next color change. So yarning over, pulling through two all the way back. Pull through two. So now again, the second color from the tip of our hook is a different color. So we're going to rotate this to look through the back. We're gonna lay our working color over and pull our new working color up from under. Yarn over and pull through two all the way back. And you pull through two until you have only one loop left on your hook and that's how you know that the row is complete. Okay, doesn't look like a whole lot right now, but as your rows continue to grow, which will happen a lot faster than you think, you're going to have a beautiful blanket in no time. So let's do the next row. So we're going to do our forward pass, pulling up the 11 stitches needed in color A. until we get to the point where we're at color B. So these are 11 stitches of A, and now we need to switch to color B. So we're gonna insert our hook as if to pull up in color B, and we're gonna again rotate to the back of our work. We're going to lay the current working yarn over the old working yarn, or what will be now the, the current working yarn, and we're gonna pull that new color up and over our old working color and pull up that loop and continue on. All right, and now we're again at our third color change where we need to work into this loop with color A again. So we're going to rotate our work, lay our current working yarn down to the left. We're gonna pull up the new working yarn. We're gonna tug on it slightly to make sure it's nice and taut and we don't have any holes and then we're gonna pull up a loop with that new color and continue that all the way across. So this is a Tunisian simple stitch. You're just pulling up a loop in the front vertical bars all the way down to the end now. And then you're gonna again rotate your work towards you, work under those two loops of the last stitch Pull up a loop, chain one, and now we're going to, going to do our return pass. So we're gonna pull through two until the second loop from the tip of our hook is a different color. So we're looking again for that fisherman color before we change it. 
Okay, second loop from the tip is a different color. We're gonna lay this old color down to the right, pull up the new color, do a quick little tug to make sure everything is secure. And then again, we're gonna pull through two until we get to our next color change. Here we are, second loop from the hook is our A color. So we're going to lay the cream over to our right, pull up the color that we need, and pull through two to complete the return pass. So this is what we have so far. You can already see that the color changes are laying right on top of each other, so you're gonna have those nice, clean color changes for your blocks, and your Tunisian simple stitches are nice and even. As you can tell already, our project is wanting to curl. Tunisian crochet has a bad reputation for curling. There's really no way around it, at least for a project like this, because this is the correct hook to use, the perfect yarn to use. What you'll want to do when you, throughout this project, if you want to relax a little bit, is you can just kind of hit it with some steam. Do not iron it, don't put your iron on it, but if you steam it just lightly, like you would steam a collared shirt, this project will relax and you'll be able to see it a lot more clearly. So I'm gonna go grab a fresh cup of coffee and I'm going to finish this first block and I'll meet you back here for the second color changes in our project. Hey friends, Tony here. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial on how to make the sweet gingham baby blanket. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, patterns, and product reviews. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook for current projects and pattern releases. Here we are at the end of our first block. And by that, I mean we have 11 stitches across and we now have 10 rows. And here's a quick, easy way to count your Tunisian crochet rows. So each vertical bar counts as one row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then this working live row counts as 10. So we have 10 rows. What we'll need to do next is change color. And I'm gonna prepare my yarn first before I change those colors. So the next set of blocks is gonna be alternating color C, then color A. So go C, A, C, A, all the way across your blanket. So I am going to kind of move these ones out the way. I have color C here, which is the dark rose heather, and then my color A, which is the rose heather, and then another ball of color C, which is the dark rose heather. What I'll need to do now is complete my row by finishing these last few stitches, and we're gonna do a color change at the end of this return pass and move into color C. So we're going to yarn over until yarn over and pull through until there are two loops left on the hook right here. And we are going to drop color A and we are going to add color C. And the way you can do a nice clean color change is when you still have two loops left on your hook, we're going to yarn over with the new color and pull through those two loops with the new color. So that ends the previous row and starts us up for the next row. So what I'm going to do now and what I encourage you to do in your own project is cut all of the yarn tails from the last rows that you were working. When you're ready for your next set of box, cut your old colors because they will not line up with the color changes that you'll need to do in this row. So I'm going to cut color A, color B, and color A. I leave nice long tails because I'll still need to weave these in later and I want to make sure I don't have any issues with unraveling, but for now you can just cut those. So we're gonna pull the loop for color C nice and tight and we are going to do our Tunisian color changes and our Tunisian simple stitches like we had been before. So the first loop on our hook counts as the first stitch and we're gonna pull up 10 more so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and 11. Just like before, we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch like normal, but we're ready for our new color, which is going to be color A. So I'm going to pull up color A, just like we did before, 
yarn over the hook and pull up the loop. And then I'm going to pull up loops in the next 10 stitches. I get questions sometimes about how I keep my yarn from getting tangled in a project like this. And the answer is you don't really. <laughs> my saving grace was since my blocks are only 10 rows tall, I just let the yarn tangle. And then when I was ready for my next set of blocks, I would just cut the yarns and kind of detangle them then. So I just kind of dealt with the tangle. I didn't try to keep it from tangling up. There's not really any easy way to do that in Tunisian crochet because of the way that you wrap your color changes. So next up, I'm going to be dropping color A, inserting my hook in the next stitch and I'm grabbing color C. Yarning over the hook, pulling up the loop, and then I'm going to do 10 stitches with color C. 10 more stitches with color C. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 for that last stitch we're going to rotate towards us working under both loops for the final stitch and pull up a loop next we'll need to chain one and do our return pass so yarn over pull through two loops until the second loop from the tip of the hook is a different color and then we'll be ready for our color change all right so again we're going to take the old yarn, fold it over the new yarn, pull it nice and taut, yarn over the hook, pull through two. And continue that until the next color change. Pulling the old yarn over, pulling up, new working yarn and pulling through two and continuing that down the row until you only have one loop left on your hook. Now that first loop is very, <laughs> very large because we started the new yarn there. So you'll just want to kind of pull that yarn, pull it nice and taut as best as you can. Once you go to weave in your ends, that's when we'll kind of deal with that. So just like our previous set of blocks, this set of blocks is going to be 10 rows high. So we'll do another row together. So we're pulling up 10 more loops with color C till we get to our color change. We're ready to change color. So we're gonna insert our hook as if we're ready to change our color here. We're going to lay the old yarn over the new yarn, pull the new yarn nice and taut so we don't have any holes, and pull up loops in the next 11 stitches. Ten and 11. Insert the hook into the next stitch, lay the old yarn over the new yarn, pull the new yarn nice and taut, and pull up loops in the next 11 stitches. Inserting under both loops of the last stitch, there we go. And then we'll chain one, yarn over, pull through two loops all the way back. Well, till the next color change, not all the way back. Remember the next color change is when the second loop from the tip of the hook is a different color. We're going to again rotate, lay the old color over the new color, pull it nice and taut, yarn over, pull through two loops until the next color change. Lay the old yarn over the new yarn, pull it nice and taut, yarn over and pull through two until there's only one loop left on the hook. So that is the beginning of your second set of blocks. So your 
second set of block colors are laying right on top of the blocks underneath them. Nice smooth color changes, no gapping because we've been pulling our yarns taut with each color change. So what you're going to do from here is you are going to continue with your second color of blocks, so C, A, C, A, all the way to the end of your blanket. You're gonna do 10 total rows on this block. And then I'd like you to do another 10 total rows for your next, next set of blocks, which will be um, A, B, A, B. So the rows alternate A, B, A, B, and then C, A, C, A, A, B, A, B, C A C A all the way up your blanket until you have nine total blocks. So I'm gonna do three sets of blocks and then I will meet you back here so we can work on the border. Welcome back. We have now completed, at least for the swatch, the first three sets of blocks. So one, two, three sets of blocks. So I am on my last row here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue yarning over and pulling through two until I have one loop left on my hook. At this point, I'm going to cut the remaining colors and only leave on the first working color A. So I'm gonna get these out of the way because now we're ready for our bind off. So we're gonna be doing a Tunisian crochet slip stitch bind off, which simply means that you're gonna go into each of your Tunisian crochet stitches and do a slip stitch. We're gonna do the entire bind off with color A, so there won't be any more color changes in Tunisian crochet at this point. So we're gonna insert our hook under the stitch, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. Now we wanna do this pretty loosely because we're gonna to need to work into these slip stitches to do our border. So don't do your slip stitches too tight but you're gonna slip stitch over the, the entire top of your blanket to bind off all these live stitches. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. So this is what your border looks like. It's nice and neat and it actually looks like the top V's of like a single crochet. And that'll make a really great foundation for when we need to work our border. So just continue even through the other colors to do a slip stitch bind off. I'll meet you at the end and we'll continue from there. Now we're nearing the end of our row, continuing with our slip stitch bind off. You'll wanna make sure you get that last stitch as well. So still working under both loops for your last stitch. Yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. At this point, you can lift your hook up and out. We're actually done working with the Tunisian crochet hook and we're gonna bring in the traditional crochet hook. We're gonna cut this yarn because our first round of the border is actually worked with color B. So this is what we have so far. It's really pretty. Um, I would encourage you to block this. If you made a swatch with me, block this first to get your actual gauge before you move on to making your full blanket. What we'll want to do next is weave in a few of these ends, at least the ones that are showing through the end of the project. We'll want to weave in those ends because we don't want to have any issue working over them when it comes to the border. So we're going to flip this over. You're going to have a lot of ends. I just want to let you know that right now you're going to have a lot of ends because every single color change is going to have an end. But it's necessary just put on some Netflix and grab a cup of coffee or a glass of wine at that point in the evening and get ready to weave in your end. So we're gonna get our yarn needle and I'm just gonna start with this end here in the corner. I'm going to weave it onto my yarn needle and I am simply going to work under some of the bumps on the back of the work. Now this stitch here in the corner, this does count as one of the stitches I'll need to work into for my border. So I want to make sure I try and keep that flat. So I'm going to work under just a few of the bumps on the back here. I'll work up one way, don't pull it too tight. And then I'm going to work up the other way. Just however many loops is comfortable for you. I think I'll work one additional way too because I'm always just a little bit nervous that the ends are going to unravel. 
especially since this can be machine washed. And then we're going to cut that yarn and now the end is gone. And you're gonna do that for each end on your project. When you're ready to weave in any ends at the color changes, my suggestion is to pull the yarn nice and taut, do one quick overhand knot, and then weave those ends in. That way, these yarns are secured around each other and that's not gonna go anywhere. So that additional knot, which you can barely see, then you would weave in the additional ends and then you don't have to worry about there being any holes here in this color change. It's nice and secure here. And you'll do that for all of the areas with the color change. So even with this spot, you can see that this loop right here is a bit loose. So by going onto the back, pulling those loops nice and taut, giving them a tie around each other, just one quick little overhand knot, and now you look and that loop is secured that I can barely get my hook under there. So that's how you'll weave in the ends for your project, just working under a few of the bumps here on the back. All right, so I am back and ready to start my border. As you'll notice, I did put a little bit of steam on the edges of my project. It was curling pretty badly, even worse than this. And there's no way I would have been able to put a border that you could actually see on a project that was curling that badly. So I just set it on my ironing board. I took my iron and kind of hovered over the project, pressing the steam button to kind of flatten these out. And then I smoothed them down with my hands. So I wanna do a full on kind of blocking process once this is finished, but just to make sure you can see it while I do this border, I did apply a little bit of steam to my edges. So now that we are ready to do the border, a couple things I want to make you aware of when it comes to the construction of Tunisian crochet that makes it a little bit different from traditional crochet when you go to put on a border. First thing you'll notice about Tunisian crochet is there is not really a corner stitch. This stitch is part of this edge and this stitch is part of this edge. So when you're doing your first round of border with Tunisian crochet, we are actually just gonna do a chain three here in the corner and then continue working this edge. So we'll kind of start, we'll start down here, work our way up. When we get to this corner, we're gonna chain three, rotate the work and work across this way. Another thing to note is we are going to be starting our border with color B, which is the fisherman color. And we're going to want to start our border in any stitch, the first stitch of any row. So this stitch is the first stitch on this row. So we're going to insert our hook and pull up a loop of the first color of our border. We're going to chain one and then we're going to put a single crochet in that same space. And now we're set up to do our border. What we're gonna do for this first round of border is we are simply going to single crochet across, chain three in the corners, single crochet across, and do that for each row. So I'm going to single crochet here, working under both loops of each stitch. You'll be able to easily see both loops of each stitch as well, because when we did the bind off, when we did the foundation row, and the way that we work our edges, you always end up with these beautiful loops that look like the tops of stitches that are really, really easy to work into. So we're gonna go into those stitches and single crochet each. I'll meet you here when we get to the other corner. Here we're approaching the corner as I said, there's not a real obvious corner stitch, so we're going to make one. So I've just completed the last stitch for the top row of my blanket. I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to start working down this edge of my blanket. So working under the two loops of the stitch and doing a single crochet in each stitch. Give me just a minute and we will meet down at the next edge, the next corner, and do that stitch. So here we are again, approaching a corner stitch. So I've got one, two, three stitches left here. And then I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, rotate my work, and begin working under the two loops of the bottom row. 
Continue this around until you get back to the first stitch of the first round of your border. So here I am nearing the last corner, continuing to single crochet in each stitch to where I want to place my corner. Here I'm going to chain three and I'm going to slip stitch in the first single crochet of the round. Now at this point I'm going to pull up my loop nice and high and I'm going to drop it, but I'm not going to cut it because we're going to have several more rows, rounds rather, with this yarn. So I don't want to cut it because I'm lazy and I don't want to have a lot of, <laughs> have a lot of ends to weave in. So I'm going to leave that there. Now we're ready to add our next color, which is going to be color C, the dark rose heather. So we're going to insert our hook into the chain two space, just kind of drop that loop behind your work. Insert our hook into the chain three space. We're going to pull up a loop and we're going to chain one and then we're going to put a single crochet in that same chain three space. Rotate our work to work along this edge. We're going to chain one, skip the first single crochet and work into the next. Chain one, skip one, work into the next. So this is the linen stitch. We're going to skip one, and work a single crochet into the next stitch. And continue that around and I'll meet you at the next corner. All right, so we're at our next corner. We're gonna chain one, which I've done here. We're gonna skip this stitch and we're gonna work a single crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet in our corner chain three space. So a single, chain two, and a single. Now we're going to chain one skip the first single crochet after our chain three space and start working the linen stitch in the following stitch. So chain one, skip one, single in the next. Chain one, skip one, single in the next. You'll want to continue that around working a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in each corner and I'll meet you back to close out the round. So we're now approaching the corner of our round, the last corner. So I'm going to do a single crochet, chain one. Now working into the corner, I'm gonna single crochet, chain two, and then I'm just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet of the round, cause that was also worked into our chain three space. And now I'm gonna pull that loop up. I'm gonna cut this yarn cause we are done with this color for the rest of this project. Just pull that loop up and out get rid of it. We're done with it. Next, we're going to take the loop from color B and we're going to pull it up into the chain two space of the corner here. So I'm just going to pull it through. There it is. All right. So since we didn't cut it, we don't have to attach it here. What we're going to do is pull the loop nice and taut, get these out the way. <laughs> we're going to chain one and then we're going to put a single crochet in this same chain two space. So it kind of feels like you're working backwards, which I guess you kind of are, but that's where your first single crochet goes into that chain two corner. So now we're going to chain one and continue our linen stitch around. So we are going to chain one, skip the actual single crochet and we're going to work into the chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, work into the chain one space. And we're gonna continue that around. And I'll meet you at the corner to show you how to work that. We're approaching our corner here. I have one more chain one space to work into. Then I'm gonna chain one and into the chain two space for the corner. I'm gonna work a single crochet, a chain two, and another single crochet. And that makes my corner. Next, I'll rotate my work and continue my linen stitch all the way around. Complete that and I will meet you at the last corner of the round. We are nearing our corner once again. I'm going to chain one, single crochet into the chain two space, chain two, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet of the row. 
Then I'm going to pull that loop up because we are going to work with this color again and I don't want to have to deal with a bunch of yarn ends. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the chain two space and I am going to pull up color A. So I'm going to pull up a loop, chain one, single crochet in that same space. Chain one, rotate my work to work along this edge. And then I am going to continue my linen stitch all the way around the blanket, being sure to put a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in each corner. And just like when we worked this with color C, we're gonna do the same here with color A, and I will meet you at the end of the round. So now we're nearing the end of the round with color A. I'm gonna continue my linen stitch as I have been. Chain one, now I'm in the corner, so I'm gonna single crochet into the corner chain two and slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Now I'm going to pull that loop up nice and high, cut it and get rid of it. All gone. Pull that loop up and out. Now we're going to insert our hook into the chain two space and we're going to pull up that loop of color B. Right there. Tighten down that working loop we're going to chain one and work a single crochet into that same chain two space. And chain one, or single crochet one. And then we're gonna chain one and we're gonna continue with our linen stitch all the way around the blanket. This is gonna be the last round of the blanket, just like we've done our linen stitch around in other colors, we're gonna continue that same pattern with this color. So I'll meet you back at the end of the round and let's talk about adding some pom-poms. We're reaching our corner, our very last corner on the five round border. Chain one, work a single crochet, two chains, and then slip stitch into the first single crochet of the round. Now we can finally cut this working yarn because we are done with that. So you probably have something that looks a bit like this. You try to stretch it out and these corners obviously are curling in because this piece will need to be blocked. Not only because it's Tunisian crochet, but also because we work the linen stitch, which has a tendency to curl up. I wanted to work it with this size hook and not a larger size hook to try and keep the stitches uniform and keep the project from bowing outwards. So we're gonna add our pom-pom on the corners first and then we're gonna do a little bit of blocking. For my pom-poms, I'm using color B, as well as a clover pom-pom maker. This is the two and a half inch, kind of like a medium slash large. I'll link to my video on how to make pom-poms here, but I'll do one really, really quick in super fast motion. All right, so we've got a good looking pom-pom here. You'll wanna make four of these, one for each corner. I'm gonna show you how I attach them to my blanket. Now, you'll notice that I used a doubled over length of yarn for my pom-poms because this Woolies Thick and Quick has, or this Woolies rather has a tendency to break on me. So I'm gonna grab two lengths of it and I'm gonna cut the other two lengths off to just kind of blend them into my pom-pom. And then I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to thread one length of the pom-pom onto my yarn needle. And I am going to put it through the space right after 
the single crochet of my last row here in this corner. I'm going to put one length there and then I'm going to take the other length of yarn and I'm going to put it on the other side of the single crochet that's right next to it. And then on the back, I'm going to pull them nice and taut and I'm going to double knot them here right against the corner. What this will do is it will pull the pom-pom a little more towards the actual tip corner of the blanket. What we're going to do here is we're going to take these two lengths of yarn, get them kind of similar in size, and then we're going to thread them onto the yarn needle and we're actually going to thread them back into the pom-pom and just make them part of the pom-pom so you don't have any additional ends to weave in there. And we're going to cut them and it'll be like they never existed. And there are your corners. So I'm going to finish up my blanket, weave in some additional ends and I'll meet you right back here and we're going to do a little bit of light blocking. At this point, your blanket probably looks a bit like this. You should have at this point attached your pom-poms to all four corners. I have a pom-pom right here. And what we're going to do is a little bit of light blocking. Blocking is the process by which we'll relax the fibers into a shape that we want. There's lots of ways to do this. For this small of a swatch and also for your larger blanket, I think steam blocking is plenty. So you'll need a few supplies. Here I have T-pins rust proof tea pins that we'll use to do some finer blocking. We have knit blockers. These are from Knitter's Pride. They're a way that we'll block larger pieces of our project. And then I also have some blocking boards, which are basically just the foam puzzle mats that they use at daycares and stuff like that. So I'm going to first lay down my puzzle pieces. And you always want to lay down more mats than you think you'll need because you never know exactly how big your project is going to block out. But if you did your swatch and blocked your swatch, you should have a feel for how big your blanket's going to be. Next up, we are going to pin down all of our edges. So I'm going to start in the very corners with a couple T-pins because I want the corners to be nice and sharp, even though they have pom-poms on them. So I'm just going to insert a T-pin at an angle into the corner. Then I will stretch the blanket into the size I want it to be and insert a T-pin in the following corner and do that for all four corners, stretching the project to where you want it to land. Great. We can actually probably make it a little bit bigger but we don't want to stretch it too much that our edges look weird. So just get it to a place that you're comfortable with. Now I'm going to go in with my knit blockers and I'm going to pin down the larger areas, spaces with a larger space between them so I don't have to do one T-pin at a time. And I'm going to do that for all four corners, I'm trying to keep my corners nice and straight. Couple more. Mm, that got weird. Okay. <laughs> that feels better. All right. So we have something that feels like a pretty close to square square. Next, we are going to need to actually steam our project. And for that, I have this cutesy little steamer here. This is the UR Power. I am going to link to it in this video. It, it, it holds, I think, like 12 ounces of water, so not a lot. So if you are making a full-size project, you'll probably need to fill this a couple times to get your steaming done. But I am going to now turn it on. And the only thing about this steamer is it doesn't steam well directly down. So I'm actually going to have to tilt my project up to get the steam to it. So as you can hear already, it is starting to warm up, so I'm going to set this down so I don't burn my hands. Get all this stuff out the way. And then I'm going to tilt my project up slightly so I can actually do the steaming. So you'll know when it's ready, when st actual steam starts to come out of the front of the steamer. There it is. 
I'll try not to steam up my entire camera lens so you can see this, but I'm just hovering over the project and you'll be able to actually see the fibers start to relax. I'm going over the whole project paying special attention to the border and all of the color changes, all of the joins. Just hovering right over the project, not really touching it because I don't want to burn the acrylic that's in this yarn. Paying special attention to the corners in the border and just hovering right over it. Go over it as many times as you want to. I like to make sure the yarn is nice and saturated with warm water so that I know that it's gonna to get to the shape that I want it to be. And then we'll just turn off our steamer, kind of get it out the way. And you'll wanna let your project dry completely before you remove it from the blocking board. But I'm gonna show you super quick what you can expect once you block your project. So I'm gonna take my knit blockers out and put them back in their container. All right, we can move this board out the way. And now you can see that your project is nice and flat. Oh, it makes such a world of difference just doing a quick little blocking on it. You have these nice sharp corners where your pom-poms will be and you have a lot of really good drape now because before our project was a little bit stiff. You have some really good drape here and this project is machine washable and dryable. I encourage you to machine wash it, lay it flat to dry and kind of pin it down into place. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for this tutorial of the Sweet Gingham Baby Blanket. Please stick around for a quick announcement. Thanks again for joining me for this tutorial on the Sweet Gingham Baby Blanket and special thanks to my friends at Joanne for inspiring and sponsoring this free pattern. Read more about this pattern on my blog, tlycblog.com and get a printable PDF version of the pattern from tlyarncrafts.com. And now I've just gotta know, are you making a Sweet Gingham Baby Blanket? Cause if you are, share your progress with me on Instagram using the hashtag Sweet Gingham. Also leave a comment below and let me know what color combo you're planning to use. Thanks again for hanging with me today and I will see you next time.